Master Grade Gundam Age 2 Dark Hound. Hey, what's up again, everybody? Robert184, 2 rs 2 bs GundamReviews.net, and it's great to have you here as it's time to wrap up my look at the Master Grade Gundam Age 2 Dark Hound. Captain Ash, Asamasano's third mobile suit, our third variation of the Age 2 from the third generation of Gundam Age. You've seen everything from the MS, the Unbox, and the Transformation, and now I'll give you a list of the good and bad things that I could pick out so you can make the call whether this is something you want to add to your collection. He's transformed here for the negatives, and let's just start with what you're going to be getting. First of all, for a small Master Grade box, you're going to be paying 4,200 yen, which just seems a little bit pricey. I mean, it's always going to be based on the amount of plastic. It's just for that price, you would have expected a larger box. But I suppose in keeping with the themes of what they've done with the other Master Grades, it's not going to be all that bad. In terms of the plastic itself, you're going to have some good parts. You just want to make sure that you're not going to have any difficulties. When I cut off the face part, it wasn't detached already, but as soon as I cut it off, uh, half the face fell off, so it's the kind of thing that a little bit of glue on hand may have to come into play. But then when you actually put it all together, you're going to feel a little bit disappointed in just the overall stability of the kit for two main reasons. First of all, starting in the legs, you're going to have this fancy bend mechanism that instead of just having a 90 degree bend or something for the legs, or even even just going wing Z style there, or whatever you want to call it, the zigzag zag that's going to get it into place here, it's going to have this fancy d device that all it's going to do is bring a gray part forward which is going to clip onto the hand, and that's fantastic. However, because of that, you may have seen in the earlier parts that if you use anything like the Dodds Lancer as a weapon and have it holding out, he's just going to collapse forward because his legs are not going to be secure. They could have fixed that with a better lock mechanism back there with the black panel on the back of the leg. Didn't work out. And when you work your way up to the chest, you're also going to have some loose parts all over the place there. The legs are not going to be fit in all that securely. They're going to be able to bend out, in and out, but they're just going to be held on very, very skinny peg there. It doesn't feel very secure at all. Combine that with the chest where you've got the sloppy parts that always feel, it's almost rattly if you just shake it, that the two side vents, they're just going to be rig uh, jiggling around all over the place, and it really doesn't feel secure. Other problems include the fact that the shoulders are going to move around well on occasion, but they're also going to have a lot of moving parts, and that's due to the transformation, due to the Vulcans, due to the fact that you've got the gray parts, when you actually put the attachment point on, it's going to be on the shoulders, not the arms themselves. And the gray polycaps, they do work most of the time, but they're not going to give you a great range of mobility bending forward. And also, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get them back into place on occasion. So you're just going to want to be a little bit careful with that. You're also going to want to be careful with the green part for the eyes. Make sure you're not making a mistake with that you put the yellow and the green in the wrong places. Great that they give you two options, though. But when you pop off the V-fin, I almost had a few instances where that V-fin felt like it could almost break especially with the transformation as your hands are going to be all over this thing. But in the end, when you pop it off and you flip around the green part there, it's just going to fall off or it's not going to stay in place all that well. And you also don't want to scratch it up too much, so don't go at it with a modeler's knife to pull it down or anything like that. But onto the transformation itself, which is going to be good and bad. Uh, the dogs part is going to work out well. The legs part, they really didn't need to be this complicated there. And also for the front skirts, you have less just like one or two millimeters of plastic is actually going to stick into those skirts there. These should actually be flipped down. But anyway, you're not going to have a lot of stability. It doesn't feel that secure. And it's the same thing. I do like the fact that they're going to use the hands there as the adjust as the attachment point, but it just doesn't feel all that great. And when you combine that with the landing gear, that is also not going to stick down all that well. He's not going to be able to sit parallel to the ground, which is what you sort of want to see if you have him sitting down. For example, on a runway, which doesn't really apply in space. I'm thinking Macross, though. Something could look a lot of fun there. But anyway, he's obviously meant to be up on an action base. And something else, you've got this the ability to bring down the pilot. Captain Ash, he looks great, and he's got an elevator seat. What more could you ask for? Well, unfortunately, I was getting stress marks there on the chest when I put everything together. So it's the kind of thing that having done it once to show it off, probably not ever going to do it again because you just don't want to break off that essential kind of parts. And you're also going to have to be aware that the Dodds Lancer is going to be heavy and long, so in terms of weight issues, you are going to have them, especially when you combine it with some of the flaws uh, inherent to the transformation there. And you're also going to have some loose parts that are going to fall off. I had the black parts of the chest fall off all over the place, the gray on the shoulders. And for the colors, you're not going to see all that much of the light gray, which is a little disappointing because it's cool that they've got the two colors in there. And some people definitely would have liked to see some more white, as we saw in the advanced grade spinning around there. On the other hand, however, there's a lot of positives, and it's very easy to get reminded of those when it's back in its MS form there. 
First of all, let's start with the unbox. And when you take a look at the box, great cover out there. It's just well designed with the white on the sides. Lots of great features shown off. And when you go on the inside, you're going to see all sorts of cool decals. Four sheets in total. If you wanted to put the white ones on, I think it would be great. You've got the silver options there. And you're going to see some cool things. First of all, like you're going to be getting lots of colorful plates. More than you'd think for a pretty much just three color suit or how it looks from a distance anyway. But the silver parts are a nice plus there. I like that they're going to give it to you for all of the parts and not just some and inconsistent. And the idea of getting a whole sheet uh, plate of clear green and clear, clear yellow, which are different from the normal, is going to be a lot of fun. You can mix and match and do some interesting things. But then when you actually put it all together, first of all, it's a fun build. It doesn't feel particularly repetitive, uh, even though it really, it really is only the shoulders and the head and a little bit for the chest in terms of the skull that's going to be different. But you're just going to have a lot of fun seeing the way everything's going to go together. The waist section is fun to build. The chest section outside of its uh, fragility is going to be a lot of fun. And the head is going to look fantastic, but it's the way the wings go together there. There are so many parts involved in the shoulders for this kit, which is going to allow them to move around all over the place. And just the little bonuses that you're going to be able to have these open up here. And you're going to see the four different parts. The fact that you can set them up offset, you can have them going in different directions. They're going to move well. No weight issues from the shoulders there. Combine that then with the fact that you're going to have fun weapons there. The Dodds Lancer is going to look great. The silver parts at the end, the fact that they've got the little circles there, really can't be helped. But if you wanted to go and paint that up, sand it, I'm sure you could do a good job. Would have been nice if these were done up in silver. But then again, they're going to look good in the light grey to offset the dark grey that they're sitting on directly attached onto. And in the hand, they can be a lot of fun. And the fact that this part is nice and light means that if you actually want to take it and put it on the wire, it's going to stick out there in the right direction, send two of them out while they're on the wings, while they're in hands. It's still going to be a lot of fun. You've also got the beam sabers there that are going to fit in quite well in the back. Those are going to move around so you can reach around and grasp them. I suppose. Didn't quite try it, actually. But you have the options with the beam sabers. Exia style, too long, too short. You can do whatever you want. Darth Maul style, new style. You can just have a lot of fun and dual, dual wielding. Well, it almost seems possible with this guy. Although there is certainly somebody better who has some beam sabers coming out of a boat. Oh, here. That could dual wield or dual, dual wield even better. For the head, I've got to say that it's absolutely fantastic. The wings here, they look more fun than the normals. And I say that the, the, the execution is even better. But it's the head that's really going to shine. And I think the H2 normal and double bullet have a fantastic head design. But this one is just going to be so unique. With the flat top, the way you put it all together, the grey on the inside for the face, and the mechanism for the green part. It's not just going to be a seal. It's not going to be ignored like the advanced grade. And here you're actually going to have the ability to flip it up and down with relative ease and it's going to look good up with the very gold eyes or down with the green one. Combine it with a very nice color red, a very vibrant black if that even makes sense. It's just got the right amount of glossiness, a little bit of grey that shows through in the right place and lots of cool posing possibilities as long as you get them off the ground. You can guess. That flaws aside, this kit is still going to be a lot of fun. For what it is. First of all, it's a lead Gundam, even though it is going to be sort of one removed as Asim is no longer the main character in it. Not going to meet the color criteria, and yes, it's going to be a little bit fragile with a so so transformation. However, at the end of the day, it's a very cool pirate themed, lots of play value, excellent, and the only way that we can get a 1 100th uh, in terms of plastic models. Which means for me, when you combine a fun build, some great posing possibilities, and just all of these cool weapons, and everything you can do with the wings, and the pirate patch in the head, the only thing he's missing is a parrot on his shoulder, but I think that this is something that you would not regret owning, and I think that it's only going to make fans of old school designs, because it's got enough similarities with the X2, and fans of Gundam Age, and I think it's going to make everybody happy, and just want an X2 all the more. As he butts in. On to future speculation, where you've got to wonder. He's already got an excellent advanced grade and a high grade in hand, and that high grade, it's a little bit unfortunate that it's just so much more secure, both in MS and when it's transformed. However, where could they go from here? We've got the H2 normal in mega size model, 148, so you've got to wonder if they couldn't have done a Dark Hound, or you have to wonder if it just the line wasn't more popular, if we wouldn't be getting an H3, an HFX, and perhaps a Dark Hound, perhaps more popular than the Double Bullet, but that's got to be the main question here. Because after we got all three of the age ones, well, the ones in the first generation anyway, it seemed like we were hoping that we'd be getting all nine. Nobody knew about the FX back when they were first announced. So ten variations, never mind the Artemis, etc. 
However, the double bullet did not show up. The Dark Hound is probably going to be a lot more popular than the double bullet anyway. However, from the plates, it definitely looks like this was designed completely with all three of them in mind. It's only going to be a question of if and or when that comes out, or are they going to skip over it and go straight to the H3? And what about the normal getting its white variation? That should be showing up as a Hobby Online exclusive at some point. And who's going to be the first to go and paint up a white hound? So why don't you let me know what you think about every aspect of this plastic model and the mobile suit design and anything else, including the side stories and, of course, the future speculation about Plamo releases. Always fun to talk about. How about Robot Damacy? Anyway, it's all up to you. Let me know with a comment down below anything you think about the video and the kit itself. And as always, thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you next time with lots more news, reviews, and everything else you can use. See ya. But in terms of manga sales, could Captain Ash take the edge with Memories of Sid as opposed to One Piece? Well, actually, that's just as silly as the crew argument. It's not going to happen.